Welcome back into Playmaker Central with the voice of KU softball, Fulton Caster, fresh off Ooh. driving from the Sprint Center <laughs> called the KU TCU game today. So you're the real MVP. Appreciate you being here, driving that hour to get oh, here. Oh, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun, man. Yeah, I've been up early today, drove out to Kansas City, called KU TCU with some good friends of mine, some guys we got over at the radio station of KJHK. And then now I'm back here making an appearance on Playmakers, got to get prepped up and Got five games uh, over this weekend as we uh, hope to get some W's out there. Well, there you go. So let's let's talk some softball here. And really, you you've really been the only one to see eyes of this team. Uh, we're really excited to see um, this this team this weekend with five games uh, this weekend. So what are we going to expect from this team for their first home stand? What you're going to see is hopefully a lot more home run production. Uh, they hit a lot of home runs the first weekend down in Delay in Florida. Uh, they outscored opponents 44-4 to over that first weekend and really started off hot. But they were not playing, you know, the cream of the crop of the competition. Played, you know, Savannah State twice, Akron twice, Stetson once. Those aren't really top competitions. They're good teams, but not great teams. Then they you know, went to Jacksonville. The power waned a little bit. That's when they experienced a couple of losses. Went 2-3 and three over that weekend. Had some really late nights. Uh, we ended up actually playing all five of those games in a 41-hour span. Wow. So, I mean, it was, it was some late nights with how jam-packed that tournament was. Uh, went to Beaumont the next weekend, went 3-2, and two, only hit a few home runs, and then actually no home runs last weekend down in Orlando, but also it was a much larger park. So Rock Chalk Park is a little bit more designed for some home run field. There is some power on this team, but what you're going to see is standout pitching, good, hard softball, very fundamental play, some great defense, and a team that does not say die. This is a team that multiple times this year has been down late. They play some good teams, but these girls don't quit. You talked about the, tra the travel hardship. Seems like there was a lot. Now being home, do you think that has any positive effect on the team that they're now going to be playing at home? Because they're still going to be playing a lot of games. I mean, all i got to do is sit in a booth and talk to myself for two to four hours in a day, and I'm relieved to be coming home and, you know, being on your own schedule, being in a comfort place, you know, and I think it'll really impact these girls well is, I, you know, we just spent traveling four weeks. I did the math. We've been on a plane 10 times in the past four weeks. Uh, I, know, I know how I feel, and that can be magnified by 30 or 50 for these girls because they're doing the actual work out there. They're the ones out there on that field playing hard, doing everything they can do, and so I think coming home will help. Uh, they also they get all their fans behind them. We get some great crowds out there at those games. They're going to play some uh, some pretty good competition. Uh, Coach Smith is going to definitely get these get these girls fired and ready to play. And I know a lot of these girls, especially the seniors, you know, coming into their last year here, they're going to put on a show. And I think we can get some really good five games uh, out of these girls this weekend. Let's let's talk some players to watch. Uh, give me a pitcher to watch, and uh, offensively, give me somebody who's got a back going this year. Pitcher, i got to go with Alexis Reed. She okay. has assumed the mantle of ace of this staff with fervor. I mean, she came to the year. She already has more complete games this year than she had all of last season and not even half the amount of starts. Her ERA is below two. She's striking out people very well. She's also been pitching to contact in some of her later starts uh, that she's gone on this year. And so she has done such a good job nailing down the staff. But the pitching staff as a whole, their ERA as a whole is under two. The highest ERA is Sarah Miller with a 2 3 6. When your highest ERA out of all your girls is a two three six, and they lead the Big Twelve in ERA. They right lead now. the Big Twelve in ERA. A very good, a very good group of girls. You got a freshman standout, Mandy Roberts, who's doing a great job as well. But Alexis Reed is one pitcher. She'll probably pitch about three games this weekend, uh, most likely, and she'll probably do a great job. She holds it down the Fort Real really well. And offensively, I gotta go with the third baseman, Jesse Roan. This girl has been a house of her, fire. Her walk-up song is powered by Connie West. She <laughs> has the power. It is, it is, she has the power. She leads the team in home runs with five. She has 21 RBIs to lead the team. She's hitting 333. She's making contact. She's driving and runs. She usually sits in that three hole, though that lineup changes you know, almost day to day to find a, to find a good spot. But definitely... Uh, and then she's hitting over 350 with runners in scoring position. She is a girl who not only knows how to get on base, but knows how to drive in runs when they count. And, you know, I'm all the time having to mention how many home runs and RBIs she has. And I mention this all the time. The only reason I say that is it seems like every time she comes up, she has an opportunity to either drive in a run, a big home run would put them up. And she is definitely a clutch player to watch. And I think she'll definitely she'll put on a show this weekend, I think, uh, playing in front of her fans out here at RCP. Now talk about you talked about two veterans, and this is a younger team this year, and they had to fill a huge hole this season, replacing Chaley Bricky. Out of those young players that you've seen so far play this year, who who's the best one that stands out to you? Uh, I don't know for the other people who have watched this this team or try to pay attention to this team if they would agree with me, but I got to go with Madison Sykes, okay. the young freshman of Blue Springs, Missouri. She's taken over second base. She didn't start the year at second base. She only is coming in about the last nine or ten games, but she has stolen that job. 
I mean, she came in, got like a spot start down in Deland, and then a little bit in Jacksonville, and just was hitting like crazy and still hitting. Her hitting has fallen off the table a little bit. Her average is down to about 260, 270, but she is second on the team in walks. She's second behind Lily Bierman, who is tied for fourth place on the all-time list. So when the only person above you is essentially one of the greatest, uh, most patient hitters in KU history, that's a pretty good list to be on as a freshman. So she has done such a good job. And then her defensive abilities are astounding. She plays second. She's also played third base a little bit. Uh, but I definitely think her bat's going to heat up. She's going to learn a few things. And she's just a talented young player, really filling that void in the middle of the infield, playing great alongside Taylor McElhaney at short. And I definitely think Sykes, once she starts to figure out a few things and really starts to get that bat consistent from the left side of the plate, uh, I think she do something really special for this team. And last question before we go to break here. You had the chance to, during this past weekend, talk to Fish Smithson for a half inning. What was that like for you? Oh, man, that was the highlight of my career, I got to say. He is a fantastic, phenomenal human being, really great guy. I love that he was down there in Orlando with us. Uh, it was really great that I was able to get him on the mic for a half inning. He's a really nice guy. I really hope he makes him in the NFL because uh, I think so much to take a fly on him. But yeah, it was it was a highlight of my career. Uh, big thanks goes out to him for even choosing to sit down with me. I mean, he could have still sat there at the ballpark and watched him softball. But no, he decided to come up to the booth, uh, chat with me, spend a, spend a little bit of time with me. And it was a great experience and, and much love out to him and, and being just such a standout guy that he is. Well, Fulton, thank you for driving all this way to come here. Get ready for this weekend. A lot of games coming your way. When we come back from the break, it's crunch time, guys. Taryn's favorite segment. We'll see you after.